These are the names of the mighty men who David had. Joseph Bashebeth, the Technomonite, chief among the captains. He was also called Edeno the Exenite because he had killed 800 men at one time. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Aohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defiled the Philistines who had gathered for battle, the men of Israel had retreated. He arose and attacked the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand struck to the sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day. The people returned after him only to plunder. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. The Philistine had gathered together in a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils. So the people fled from the Philistines, but he stationed himself in the middle of the field and defended it and killed the Philistines. So the Lord brought about a great victory. Then the three of the 30 chief men went down at harvest time and came to David at the cave of Adullam and the troop of the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold, the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David said with longing, Oh, that someone will give me a drink of the water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines, drew water from the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he will not drink, but poured it out to the Lord. And he said, Far be from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is this not the blood of the men who went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he will not drink it. These things were done by the three mighty men. This morning, in a very short time, for the weeks we have discussed, and last week we talked about capacity, this morning we are going to the second mighty man out of the three. And we are talking about conformity or uniformity. So from capacity, you must move to conformity or uniform. Can you say it? Conformity or uniformity? Can you say it again? Conformity or uniformity? Take your seats in the presence of the Lord and give the Lord a mighty clap. I said give the Lord a mighty, a mighty clap. Not a clap, a mighty clap. All right. Praise God. So this morning we are moving to the second mighty man. And the word of God says his name is Eliezer. Now, before we move this morning, we're going to move through many dimensions. But I need to establish the concept of uniformity or the concept of conformity first. As I was going through the things for this morning, I realized that the Christian faith has two dimensions, technically speaking. According to the book of Romans, chapter number 12, reading from verse 1 to verse 2, the Bible reads, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable 
acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. Two words appear there. I want you to follow the two words carefully. Verse 2. And do not be conformed, that's the first word, to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So in the Christian faith, there is two words you must always look for. You are supposed to transform in this world. But you are supposed to conform to God. Praise Jesus. Are, are you following? Are you following? You are supposed to transform... In this world, he said, don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. So in your office, you are not supposed to conform. You are supposed to transform. But when you come to God, you are not supposed to transform. You are supposed to what? Conform. So there are two words. So it's either the Christian is transforming or conforming. Are you here this morning? So it's either you are what? Transforming or conform. So, if you work in a company and there are thieves and bribes going on, you are not supposed to what? Conform. You are supposed to be a transformer. The word transform is the word meta. Morphosis. Metamorphose. The word morphosis simply means form. And the word meta simply means changing into. So, metamorphosis simply means changing. Uh, the word for conform is samorphosis. And it simply means to, to add to something's form so that the thing that is added becomes part of the form. Conforming. Genesis chapter 3. Chapter 2, sorry. The verse number 24. Conforming, conforming, conforming. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined. That is conforming. <laughs> and be joined to his wife and the two or they shall become one. Can you bring King James? King James, not new King James, King James. And they shall be what? One flesh. So, According to logic and mathematics, one plus one is equal to what? Two. Oh, somebody said one. That's math. One plus one is equal to what? But in the kingdom set up, the oppressions of God one plus one is not equal to two. In the dimension of God, one plus one is equal to one. And the two, Adam and Eve, they shall become what? Two. They shall become what? One. So, Right at the beginning of creation, you were created to become one with something. Man was created to conform to something. It means that it's either you are conforming to the standards of the world, you are conforming to the standards of the devil, or you are conforming to the standards of God. Because every human being from the concept of creation was created to conform to something. So a man is created to conform to the wife. So if you see a woman that you don't want to be conformed to, don't marry her. Man is created to, you see, the reason why the reason why people have addictions and, and people struggle with certain things is that 
whatever you cleave on to, whatever you give your attention to, whatever you give your energy to, automatically you will conform to it. Because that is how God created us. God created us that anything you give your energy, your drive, your passion, your intelligence, your love, your time, your energy to, you, you conform to that thing. So if you give your energy to alcohol, you will start by drinking one bottle of alcohol. But by the time you have conformed to the bottles, even if you drink 20, it will not tip you. You will be okay, intact. You will walk fully. Because man is created to conform. <laughs> if you conform to pornography, everything you see, even if you see a car, the car will, will look like a pornographic object. Whatever you give your attention to, you shall become. Because man was created to conform. There are a lot of you, if your phone is missing for one day, you will die. Because you spend more time with your phone than your husband. You spend more time, even on the bed, even on the bed in the night, people, instead of talking to their wives or husband, the, the husband is holding the phone, the wife is holding the phone. People have built more trust on their phone more than the people they are married to. Because human beings are created to conform. Are you here this morning? We are created to work, to conform. So in the kingdom, Alex plus prayer will not be Alex and prayer. It will become Alex prayer. So when you see prayer, you see Alex. When you see Alex, you see prayer. Alex plus fasting will not give you Alex and fasting. It will be Alex fasting or Alex prayer. Or, so whatever you conform to in the dynamics of God, you are supposed to become one with the thing. Therefore, I lift up prayer. Any satanic conformity that is forming in your life from this morning, from the auspices of the Holy Ghost, I lift up prayer. May deliverance come and separate you. Self separation. Self separation. There are people who dated foolish people. And because they dated foolish people, even when wise people come, they refuse them because they have developed an addiction for foolishness. There are people who dated promiscuous people. So even when you come and you are not promiscuous, they are not interested. It's a satanic addiction. Satanic. There are people who are, who are addicted to drunkards. They are addicted to drug addicts. So if you come into their life and they, they don't see, some people are even addicted to abuse. There are some women, if you, if you are in a relationship with them and you don't abuse them verbally or you don't beat them up, they think you don't love them because they have dated wicked people who have beaten them, molested them verbally, physically, morally, spiritually, financially. So when a good man comes, they think the good man is rather the fake one. That is a satanic conformity. But I prophesy this morning, anyone under the sound of my voice that is caught up in any satanic conformity, I lift up my hands and I pray a prayer of deliverance. May God deliver you. I said, my God, may God deliver you. I said, may God deliver you. Deliver. We are created to walk. Conform. Huh. We are created to conform. So in, in, in the mathematics of God, whatever you become attached to will become one with you. Come on now. Whatever you become attached to, you become one with the thing. Many people ask me, man of God, how do I operate in the power of God? How do I operate in the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Bring me your phone. I can show you why you are not operating in it yet. Uh, let me look at the movies you watch every night. Uh, let me look at the music you listen to. You see, there are a lot of things that is shaping the minds of people and they don't even know that that thing is shaping them. For example, music. You, you see, music 
has a subconscious effect. For example, if you are sitting somewhere like a restaurant, you went there to eat, right? And they start playing a song. By the time you realize you are tapping your feet, maybe they are even playing Calypso and they are singing in Spanish. You don't even understand the words they are saying. But all of a sudden, without permission, you begin to, your, your feet will begin to move to the groove. Then you begin to dance. By the time you realize you are moving, but you are there to eat. Because music has the capacity, the strength, the, the power, the ebullience to enter your subconscious without your permission. So the kind of music you are listening to is shaping your subconscious. But you see, it looks like, oh, this is nothing. I mean, oh, come on now. I'm there. I'm give on to Caesar. What belongs to Caesar and give on to God. What belongs to God? No, 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 no. There is always a spirit behind every sound. And spirits move by sound. That is why Palance, Pilimi, Kampa, Baba, Tunde, Olatunji, one of the most skilled drummers the world has ever seen, a Nigerian, at one point he even played with, with, with Bob Marley uh, in, in, was it, what, what, come on now, come on now, help me. I, I think it was the Harvard Sports Stadium. Don't take this preacher for jokes. I know a lot of things. This big head is not big for nothing. <laughs> and Baba Tunde Olatunji said this. He said that when a drum, somebody spare me some, spare me some sticks. Oh, yeah. Baba Tunde Olatunji said, when a drum is hit, three things come into connection. Number one, all drums or African drums are made of wood. So he says the spirit of the tree is invoked. That is one. Then he said the skin, the skin they used to cover the face of the drum, which is also the skin of an animal, is also what? Invoked. Then he said the one hitting it is also invoked. So you have three spirits that are invoked. The tree, the animal skin, and the player. That is why there is no fetish priest as powerful as anything who can operate without music? The, the time they begin to hit the drums, king, 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 the, the atmosphere, it means nature is calling for that spirit. So the spirit of the animal, which is the skin on the drum, the spirit of the tree, which is the carving of the drum, and the spirit of the drummer, they synchronize and invite a spirit. So you might not be hearing words. They are just playing king, 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 and spirits that have ruled the world for 500 years they are invoked and they are empowered to do things they can cut themselves with knives and the knife won't cut they can drink poison and they are still standing there why because they have invoked the spirits of nature and the spirits empowers them if they put the same thing in music it will cause something in you We are created to conform. I like the way the place is quiet. Let it remain this quiet. So that today you'll be delivered. Yes. Created to conform. Created. <laughs> Malasia. So everywhere sound is invoked. There's a spirit at work. The last time... Elisha was finding it difficult to, uh, to look into the realm of the spirit. He said, they are pothouse. He said, bring me somebody who can play. The last time when Saul was suffering from a satanic evil spirit, any time the Bible said David played, he didn't sing. He just played. So just the cause alone, just the cause alone can communicate with the spirit. As David was just playing the harp, the, the communication was intact. For the spirit inside Saul to know, it is time for you to leave. So David was delivering Saul out of satanic torment, not by words, but by sound. It means that the words you hear can bring a good spirit into your life or a bad spirit into your life. And I prophesy this morning that a generation must arise that will not give the devil the chance to come into our children, come into our lives with wrong music, sound wrong music. Say, Father, deliver me from wrong music. Say, Father, deliver me. Some of you, when you close that, delete the nonsense on your phone. A church. A church. 
tie nkwase anwoma tie ntu bon kwase abrabo ubenya nkwase aketua is normal <laughs> said let judah go first when they were going to war god said let judah go first do you know what judah means praise said whenever you are going to war let music go first that is why when soldiers are going for war you hear samina mina because music has the ability to bring into you what they call endorphins which are hormones released for excitement and mini kasiman telling me her lazim pene kanaha endorphins are released it it energy it brings some level of heightened and hype and bini kamataya librambo sekedisa now the sons of israel arose and went to battle and inquired of god and said who shall go up first for us to battle against the sons of benjamin then the lord said judah must go first judah means praise so god is saying until you engage praise don't engage in warfare because music has the propensity to invite spirit so god said judah must go first it means praise must go first when we come to church we rather reverse it and them as is wrong praise must go first for every warfare praise must go first oj oja susu go obey juma by the time we are singing the song power is entering you and every word you will utter will carry power to perform why because praise must go first this morning i lift up praise may praise go ahead of you this week may praise go ahead of you in the days remaining may judah go first when your children are going to school may judah go first when your children are coming from school may judah go first when you enter your company may judah go first when you are married may judah go first when you are starting a business may judah go first when you are starting a ministry may judah go first sound yes my god let's continue let's continue my god let's continue shout conformity the father and son are conformed john 10:30 I and my father are one. The father and son are conformed. John t- I and my father are two. No. I and my father are one. May you be one with the father this morning. Nema simala. I said may you be one with the father this morning. I I, I can't say may you be one with the father this morning. Uh, l- let me release this nugget. Listen. I've heard a lot of people saying many times uh, you need to balance your spiritual life. It's a lie. Shall lie. Uh, I say shall lie. Now, if they say you need to balance your spiritual life, what they are saying is that you need to balance God. Now, how many of you have seen a balance before? A balance is a device with two scales. All right? That is when the Bible says a balance. Two scales. So, the symbol for justice is a balance. How many of you have seen that? When you go to the Supreme Court, you see a balance. One side here, one side there. That is the old way of measuring things before they brought the scale. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, if you say God must be balanced, watch this now. It means that if you put God on one side of the scale and you put anything on the other side, it will come to balance. My question is, what in your life can balance God? They teach things wrongly. You you see, balance God. But you balance your... How? It's a lie. Can you balance God with, with, with your education? That if you put God in a balance, can you even put God in a balance in the first place? Say balance. It's a lie. You don't have to... What you need to do is to bring everything concerning you into God. Now, watch this. Watch this. Now, for example, I'm a preacher, yeah? If I try to balance my marriage with preaching or doing the work of God, it will fail. Hands down. It will fail because I cannot balance prayer. I cannot balance fasting with my wife and children. It's not possible. So what do I do? I bring my wife and children into God. Now, if you are balancing something with God, it means the thing is not inside God. That is why a lot of preachers 
their marriages and their families are attacked. Why? Because they, the family is here and the preacher and God is here. That is wrong. You are supposed to bring everything, including your shoe, your tie, your clothes, your eyes, your nose, your ears. Everything is inside God. That is where your safety is. You cannot balance God with anything. Balance God with your business. Your business be good. Your business must rather be in God. You can't balance your business with God. No. Your business must be in God. Balance your children with God. You'll be going to church and your children will be smoking weed when you are out. Because you must put your children in God. You cannot balance anything with God, but you can put everything in God. You cannot balance anything with God. You, a lot of people balance, balance your finance with God. Your finance will collapse. But if your finance is in God, ah, Malisa Tapene Kapaya, pressed down, shaking together, running over. So when God comes and sees your finance, he applies the principle of giving, pressed down, shaking together, running over. But your finance is there and you are here. So when you finish with God, you must go and work to lift up your finance. But when I'm coming in church, my finance is in my pocket. My children are on my shoulders. My wife is standing by me. My family, my career, my business, everything about my life is in the presence of God. So I'm not here and I have to defend my children. When I stand before God, seven days in prayer, my children are there. When I stand before God, ten hours in prayer, my children are there. When I stand before God, thirty minutes of reading the Bible, my children are there. So my children, my family, my wife, my finance, they are not separated from God. They are inside God. I like the way you are quiet because we have been taught the wrong thing. Balanced prayer with God is a lie. Everything about you must be inside prayer. You don't balance prayer with work. I can't come to church because of traffic. Very soon, there will be a traffic in your life that nothing can stop. You must bring your work in God. It is not the work that gives you money. It is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich. It's not the office you work in. It's the blessings. You see, it's the blessings. You are looking at a guy. I have not taken pay from any company i look good i smell good i'm anointed i am a foolproof that if you trust in god every need of you will be supplied stop trying to balance god but bring everything in god let's continue that's just by the way it's, it's a bonus feature And then confirm when you're mobile. When you're doing two by four, two man, sorry, you're a joker. When I see that, I know your end has come. I know. I know. So for. I am come to pray and I am beside me about but a jumen tea. Okay. So it means that the work has taken the place of prayer. So what prayer must do in your life, your work will do for you. When the witches in your hometown start flying into your house, use your work certificate and your badge and lift it up and say, I work in so-so and so company. Every witch here leave. You see. We have produced jokers. Jokers. I'm telling you, jokers. Jokers. You go to work earlier than you come to church. You are a joker. I'm not losing my message. I'm staying right here. You are a joker. It's a joker with capital letters. And you expect that you have control in the work. They will suck you. You think everybody there smiling. Hello. With perfumes. If you only knew what they did last night before coming to the office, you run away. You, somebody, I think, was locked up. In a company, he was locked up. The security man didn't know somebody else, And he locked the person up. So the person now has to find a way of contacting people outside to contact the security man. So, you know, if you are locked up in a place, you become a bit disturbed, all right? So the man was, was a woman, was a bit disturbed. So she started walking around, like walking in the area offices. Then he got to one corridor or aisle. 
and he saw a naked man. A naked man walking. Naked. I'm not talking about half naked. Totally naked. With no shoes. And was singing and doing incantations. Thinking that there is nobody in the office. Now, if you, we have called for Friday prayer. And you are sitting somewhere saying that, uh, when I close, I don't come early. So, traffic will catch me. How can you be in a company with somebody who is naked in the office and walking? And you expect that when promotion comes, you that is fasting, you are eating KFC. Fasting, no opportunity, sorry, no yaka. So that nobody will even see that you are not fasting. Then when issues come, you are looking for the pastor. You are, you are a joker with capital J. A joker with capital what? J. A joker with capital J. Somebody has stripped naked. A lady came from London and went for nightclub. Then he was getting back home. He saw a young man totally naked carrying a coffin at where they have the KFC at Hatcho. So he was coming from Wisconsin naked and carrying a coffin. And you, you, when we lift up three minutes of prayer, you are testing your girlfriend to bring you pizza after church. You are not, and you expect that when you are competing with that guy, you overcome him. How? Jesus said, this kind goeth not, except by fasting and prayer. It means that until you engage the arsenals of fasting and prayer, there are certain spirits you can never overcome. They don't respect your chicken. They don't respect your coke. They don't respect your fan ice. They don't respect your grills. They don't respect your flies. They don't respect your hamburgers. The only thing they respect is a man who has engaged in prayer. Let's continue. Conformity. <laughs> Conformity. 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 I have a tailor in Medina. Any time I'll go to their shop after at 12, he is the spiritual leader of the tailor shop. They will put down their mat and he leads them. He stands, he goes, he stands. Who tailor shop on a junction for gossip? When people want to leave gossip, they come to the tailor shop to leave it there so that it can spread all over Accra. When you are entering the shop, you remove your shoes. Where they sew, nobody will go work there with shoes. Yes, it's a sanctuary. When you give him money, I, I observe. When you give him money, he puts it on the machine. There's a slot. You open the slot and put the machine there. He is honoring the machine that without you, this money would not have come. So the first person to taste the money is not his mouth, it's the machine. He is a spiritual person. She. Yeah. <laughs> shout conformity. <laughs> you see now, you see now two people shouted. Yeah, it means I'm preaching. Shout conformity. Yeah, three people. <laughs> I'm preaching. <laughs> I'm preaching good. <laughs> Let's continue. Let's continue. In Romans 8, 29, the Bible said to conform to the image of the Son of God. Romans 8, 29, we are supposed to conform to the image of the Son of God. Conform to the image of the Son of God. For those who, whom he foreknew, he also predestinated to become what? Conform to to the image of the son of God. You are supposed to conform to Christ. You are supposed to conform to the image of the son of God. You are supposed to conform to the father and the son. John 17, 22 to 23. John 17, 22 to 23. You are supposed to conform to, yes. He said, the glory, watch this now. The glory which you gave me, I have given to them. That they may be one. So the true glory of God given is to make all of us one. So if God has given you glory and it has made you pompous and proud, 
that is not glory. That is vain glory. There is a difference between glory and vain glory. If God gives you glory, for example, if God blesses you with something glorious, like say a house, and that house is entertaining witches and wizards, rather than becoming a cell center, a cell center for the things of God. Now, look at me now. Before 300 years came, the church had no cathedral. It took the church, the early church, 300 years before the first cathedral, a cathedral, a building was built. Where were they meeting? Check the book of Acts. They were meeting in people's houses. So the first church were houses. Many of you here, you have compounds you can start cell meetings on and invite people. You, even if you can't preach, you can take a video we preach here and mount a platform, do some small chops, bring some Fanta and Coke and invite them. And when they are listening to the message, you see that all of a sudden, the atmosphere in the community is what? Transforming. It is changing. It is transforming. It is changing. The glory you gave me, I have given to them that they may become one. So it means that if my anointing is not making the church one, but it is dividing the church, it's a satanic glory. The devil had glory, but the glory of the devil was not uniting heaven. It was dividing heaven. If your gift in the church is not making the church one, but dividing the church is satanic glory, is fake glory, is vain glory glory if your anointing to preach is not bringing the body together but is dividing the body your church members don't respect other church members your church members don't respect other pastors that is vain glory because the glory that God gives is supposed to make you one if God blesses your husband with the glory Jesus gives it is not supposed to cause division the glory is supposed to make the husband and the wife one the glory is supposed to make the pastor and the church one. The glory is supposed to make the president and the country one. The glory is supposed to make the father and the son one. The glory is supposed to make the mother and daughter one. The glory so until the glory of God is making us one. I am very 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 skeptical about where it came from. If your glory is making you more than the church and you alone drive the nice car, you alone have money in your account and the rest of us are crumbling and scrambling for a little crumbs from your table that is satanic slavery that is satanic slavery you are a tax master and not a man of glory because glory is supposed to make us one 